We're here with episode two of Not Even Nominated to talk about Myrna Loy with John DeLeo. Hey, everyone. Hi, Nick. Yes, we're here to talk about Not Even Nominated, 40 Overlooked Co-Stars of Oscar-Winning Performances. And today we're going to talk about Myrna Loy in the Best Years of Our Lives from 1946, because Frederick March won as Best Actor for this film, and his co-star, his wife in the movie, Myrna Loy, wasn't even nominated. And yes, I will concede that uh, March's role is larger than Myrna Loy's. It's focused on the three returning servicemen right after World War II, assimilating back into civilian life. It's Frederick March, Dana Andrews, and Harold Russell. But Myrna Loy, who is top billed, uh, plays March's wife, and she really is the anchor of the most famous scene in the movie, the homecoming, when March surprises her, and it's so beautifully acted. Her uh, surprise, her spontaneity, her she's so touching and yet so unsentimental, uh, so natural. And I think that was the greatness of Myrna Loy in just about everything she did was she made it authentic. She never drew undue attention to herself. She never tried to steal a scene or draw focus. She just lives in her scenes. She grounds her scenes. That's the most famous one, but she's like that throughout the whole movie. She has beautiful moments with Teresa Wright uh, as her daughter, uh, trying to connect with her and help her out in her romantic problems without uh, getting defensive about things and really connecting and so sensitive, so nuanced. And um, with her husband's drinking as well, she's supportive, she's there, but she's aware. She's always aware of everything that's going on in every scene in the, that she's in in this movie. And even though, like I said, it's not about Myrna Loy, uh, she was an extraordinary screen actress and she was never nominated for an Oscar. And she certainly should have been nominated several times, including for this one. When somebody steals a scene like that, that expression, does somebody, that's something somebody does on purpose or they're just so good that everybody says they are Well, it, it can have a negative connotation if it looks unjustified, like, um, and then, you know, like you are uh, overstepping what you're supposed to do. But then, of course, you, it's a, also a positive thing when mm -hmm. you're just so freaking good at what you're doing, uh, you're doing the right thing and blowing everyone off the screen because you're the most talented person in the room. So the way she did it was in a supportive way of the other actors. And yeah. the negative way might be trying to, uh, well, not sabotage, but to, you know, purposely. To overstep what, what the yeah. requirements are. And even though, like I said, she was top billed, she's the, say at that particular moment, the biggest name in the movie, she never does anything that that woman, Millie, wouldn't do. And I think, like I said, it's so... It's, as we've talked about before, it's easy to be overlooked when what you do is understated if you make it look effortless and you're you're just living in the in the role of being that woman and she does it so beautifully. Um, she's not on the cover, but I do have my Best Years of Our Lives album. Uh, it's not an original, but it was whenever it was reissued, probably in the 80s. And how long was her career? Oh, she had a really long career. She started in silent movies. In oh, wow, parts. I didn't know that. And I believe uh, she was work in the early '80s was when she when she finally was doing her final performances, and she did get an honorary Oscar um, when she was in her late '80s. And she wasn't at the ceremony, but she accepted it from her home on camera. Um, but uh, she wasn't nominated for The Thin Man, which was her other most famous movie, where William Powell was nominated. He didn't win, but he was recognized, um, and that. For that movie and this movie particularly, because they're the two most famous things uh, that uh, she ever did and that she's remembered for. It seems like the honorary Oscar is the, is the Academy's way of apologizing. Yes. For overlooking. I think so. It's sort of like we thought it was going to work out and you'd win one along <laughs> the way, but clearly you're retired now, so it's like, I mean, yeah, with Cary Grant, when he, yeah, it's usually when they retired. Um, Oh, the, the most famous example would be uh, Paul Newman getting one and then winning it the next year, as mm -hmm. if to say, how dare you write me <laughs> off. Right. Um, so if that's a career ending. The uh, it, it has the smell of career uh, ending. I remember yeah. Dustin Hoffman's speech on, on that when he got hit one. He got, uh, well, um, it, it's nice 
when people get it, like Barbara Stanwyck or people you feel, um, well, it's something. But there are so many great ones that they just let drift away and pass away without being uh, recognized in that way. So, you know, I'm sure everyone felt differently about it. Some really wanted it and mm -hmm. some didn't care at all. So... So well, Myrna Lloyd, the Academy, may not have noticed you, but luckily, John D'Elia was on the job. Yes. And you're featured in his new book. <laughs> That's right. Not even nominated. Thank you. Thank you, John.